Hello everyone and welcome to another Top 5 Records video. Today we get a very special and interesting release that I have been looking forward to for quite some time. Lou Reed at Pickwick Records 1964-1965, Why Don't You Smile Now? Now why is this specifically so interesting? Well this dives into the time Lou Reed spent at Pickwick Recordings. There isn't a lot out there from his pre-Velvet Underground years, but this set has been made by the Lou Reed Archive and his late wife Laurie Anderson. So good names are involved to give us a good and clear image of our idea of what Lou Reed did at Pickwick Records. What is Pickwick Records? Well, Pickwick Records was a cheap New York based record company that made how can I say this politely? They tried to make a profit out of current day hits, current day uh, genres that were popular. They made some covers, but they made a lot of sound alikes, and it was a really a cheap record company. But Lou Reed started over there, and he started to work there as a writer, as a musician, and as a vocalist. So in later interviews, he would talk about it um, as being a very important period in his life in which he learned the craftsmanship of writing a song and to just sit down professionally and write a song, which he needed later on when he would work for Andy Warhol because there is, was this element of craftsman-like dedication to working. Andy Warhol in the early days would go up to his attic and design hundreds and hundreds of different female shoes so he could learn just from the process of making a lot and he demanded the same from Lou Reed not with shoes but with songs Lou Reed would often say that Andy Warhol would get in and then he would ask from like uh, how, how many how many songs did you write and then Lou Reed would say well I wrote five and then Andy Warhol would say oh that's so lazy why didn't you write ten I mean that kind of energy was going on there and that started for Lou Reed at Pickwick Records, and he needed that to get into the vibe of someone like Andy Warhol. So it was an, an interesting period in that regard. Also, there is one song in particular that I loved just before this record got released. Um, it's The Ostrich. And The Ostrich was an attempt to make a new dance craze, a new dance song in which people would do The Ostrich. Why is that song particularly so interesting? Well, you can hear on that recording, and unsurprisingly, this record opens with the ostrich. You can hear on that record that Lou Reed is very powerful. Uh, he did not often showcase his powers in which he, he would almost shout. He was very enthusiastic. Um, there is a certain hookness, a certain uh, tightness, a certain roughness in the sound that is in a certain way a foreboding of the Velvet Underground. But there's also this almost dumb happiness in portraying the song and doing a dance like an ostrich. A couple of months ago I saw this video online in which somebody animated the ostrich doing an ostrich, the ostrich, doing the dance the ostrich which is really really fun there's this there's this cartoon quality to it this not so seriousness which i really enjoy but but done um nice and rough so i was hoping for more of that in this record did i find it i did not find a second song like the ostrich i did find other things for example the second song here uh, Cycle Annie, which is a surf song. It's got a very nice vocal of Lou Reed. The song doesn't have a lot to say, though. It is clearly trying to rip off the uh, the, the surf hype uh, of back in the days. I mean, L Lou Reed or the entire Pickwick catalog is far from what the Beach Boys or Jan and Dean were doing. Or... Uh, the ventures or you know it's nothing close to that stuff but hearing Lou Reed sing it is fun 
Is it something I will revisit that often? I'm not sure. I, it's more of an archival interest. Will there be more songs that I will listen to more often? Yeah, for example, the fourth song here, Soul City, which is not sung by Lou Reed, but it sounds, the, the vocal performance is surprisingly good. It's a very good soul performance. So going into this, I was thinking, oh yeah, there might be moments on this record that I'll hear surprisingly good musicianship. That's also not the way you want to visit this album because that idea was, I had to let that go very early on because although Soul City is a good song, Cycle Any is fun, and I love the ostrich, we're talking about <laughs> C quality stuff in here and always, not always the best musicians. Um, some things. I wrote some notes on down, for example, our Teardrop in the Sand, in which you can hear that Lou Reed wrote or co-wrote a nice melody, but the lyrics and the performance, you, you can hear that these guys are goofing around. They, they do not believe what they're doing. The lyrics are too simple, especially the, the background vocals. I mean, come on, <laughs> these guys are goofing. Uh, Sneaky Pete. Uh, Lou Reed sings his art out on Sneaky Pete. Um, I just, I'm, I'm wondering, was he even at the point of doing heroin at this stage? I do know, and that's what he told about in interviews pretty often, that he, he wrote heroin during this big, big times. Um, somewhat trying to goof around with the, with the company, uh, see how that respond, uh, be a bit of a daring bloke, you know. Um, but I'm not sure that if he was doing heroin during, for example, the recording of Sneaky Pete, because he seems really energetic, different than from most of the stuff we know from his late 60s or early 70s, uh, Lou Reed. It's uh, pretty, pretty good, pretty good vocals. Song-wise, mm, no, Sneaky Pete, nah, it's not so good. You get moments of kitsch on this album as well. For example, song like Wild One, you hear that the guy who did sing the vocals was only interested in scoring girls and sounding like a pretty boy. You, you got those moments which are so, so clear. There's an essence of amateurism going on, even in some of the recordings in which you hear Lou Reed sing. Uh, for example, there are two songs by the Surfsiders, and these band names were made up at the moment by the company because they had this gang of musicians that would just go in the studio and they'd, they'd think of a name that might sell the record well. So the Surfsiders, which has two surf songs, Surfing um, and Little Do Scoop, uh, which is, I believe, a, a Beach Boys cover. Well, nothing of the quality of the Beach Boys survives here. It sounds as if Lou Reed is just reading the lyrics out loud for the first time. It's really one of the worst Lou Reed vocal recordings I've heard. And and there are some bad Lou Reed vocal recordings. I love Lou Reed, but there are some bad moments. And while the record goes on, there are moments in which it just just gets too bad to, to, to listen to. I've got a tiger in my tank is a horror, a horror of recording of performing. Ah, there. The last five, six, seven songs are just listing fatigue. Nothing going on here. So basically, I listen to this on Spotify. There will be a vinyl release in a couple of weeks. Although I'm tempted to buy this for the song "The Ostrich," perhaps even for "Soul City," but mainly for "The Ostrich." About forty bucks for just one song. I'm not gonna do it because. Most of this is just bad stuff. Fun of experience for a one time only. But these are not highlights or, or hidden gems in the career of Lou Reed. So I'm curious, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment below and I'll see you in my next video.